Hello, good evening. I'm Dr. Janice Morrow with American Mood Swings, and tonight we have uh, Dr. Fareed Bonimad from the American Addiction Institute of Mind Medicine here in Irvine, California. So he is an addiction specialist, and he has a background in ER medicine, and we're very grateful that he's here tonight. Let's talk about uh, what are opioids for the for people out there watching the show. Um, you know, most of most everybody out there has taken an opioid at some time. You went in for a root canal. You had some surgery. A family member. Um, so talk about what opioids are, and then and why they're so addicting. Um, you mentioned in some of your your videos um, that I've seen on YouTube how they hijack your brain. So let's go there. I like, I like that analogy because everybody understands what hijacking is <laughs> without, without getting too technical. Sure. Um, and this is, I think, important for people to understand uh, a little bit. And I'll make it really simple, okay? Uh, poppy seed, right? There's a plant, okay? And uh, from that we get opium, we get the sap, there's the big liquid. In there, what we generally refer to as the active psychotropic ingredient in any plant is an alkaloid, right? That's what it's called, alkaloid. One of the most active alkaloids in the opium uh, plant that you get, the opium poppy seed, is morphine. So many people don't know that, but morphine is what comes, you know, you could smoke opium and in there there's thebane, morphine, and a whole bunch of other active alkaloids. One of the most active ones that gives you the euphoric, the addiction, uh, the psychotropic effect is morphine. Morphine is what we would really call a natural opiate with a T. You move, for, uh, and so how do these cause the effect that they do? There's four different types of receptors in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The main one that we're gonna talk about is called the mu receptor, the Greek mu. When it hits that, the whole bunch of things happen, downward signaling and uh, release of dopamine and different parts of the brain, prefrontal cortex, uh, nucleus accumbens. That gives you the euphoria and uh, takes away the pain and all that stuff and a lot of things happen that cause uh, addiction. But I just want to point out that morphine is a natural opiate. If you change one of the groups, it becomes diacetyl morphine and it's called heroin. Many people don't know this, but heroin was discovered at the late 1880s by Bayer Aspirin when they were looking for a non-addicting opiate. In fact, the term heroin means feeling heroic from the euphoria the guys in the lab got. Uh, got. So it's diacetyl morphine as heroin. Now what you see is the fentanyls, and the, it's really the fentanyls, not fentanyl, and you got fentanyl analogs, completely different. It's all made in the lab. That's a fully synthetic opiate, which is opioid, but whatever, I'm going to use the same term. And those are all the same thing, methadone and so forth. I want everybody to know that not all opiates are bad. We, we certainly have a use for them. Um, you know, you talk about the, the most common uses and, and when we need them. Um, and I, I guess I'd like to just put this out there to anybody watching that uh, there, the fentanyl especially can be deadly. It doesn't take very much. It, it takes just a very, very small amount in your brain. Like imagine a salt shaker, put it in your hand, and that's, that's all it takes. And um, for the kids out there watching, the teenagers, you know, you're out at a party, you could be a straight A student and the best kid, you've never been in trouble. Maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend just broke up with you, your parents are on the verge of, of a divorce, something really stressful happens and you think, I just need a little something to take me off the edge. There's a lot of apps out there right now where you can get these pills off the streets. Don't do it. Uh, just assume they're cut, they're, they're, they're the synthetic fentanyl that's very deadly. Um, and with that one little pill uh, that they'll tell you is something else. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, one of our most beloved artists, Prince, uh, got it. he was a very clean, living, healthy person who got addicted to painkillers. He, he needed some surgery, he had a lot of hip pain from being a performer for so many years and um, you know, unfortunately got addicted. He didn't do illicit drugs and I believe you know, when you're getting them off the streets they can be cut. So for anybody out there, not just the kids, anybody out there who's getting anything from somebody off the street, even somebody you know, you think is a friend who you can trust them, they're, gonna, they're not gonna bring you anything bad, you really don't know. And that pill's most likely cut with fentanyl, filled with binders, so, and it's a, it looks like a tiny little aspirin and that's all it takes one little pill, 
you can be dead. So just remember that. Let's have Dr. Bonimad uh, close with um, the discussion of we, the, the uses of these and, you know, the, the practical implications. It's not like all pharmaceutical companies, there's this misconception that they're all evil and they're all about money. Yes, it, it takes a lot of money to develop drugs. They have to recoup their costs. We know that, every, you know, there's been some really bad practices, but there are very good uses for these medicines. Right. Opiates are fantastic drugs in the emergency department in the uh, pre-anesthesia for surgeries for for certain chronic pain patients and even in that area it was overused and abused certainly for hospice patients if you were in germany today last year 20 years ago and let's say you had a torn ligament on your shoulder or something and you went into your uh, physician's office if you ask the doctor for opiates, he'd look at you like you're crazy. Not in a uh, uh, accusatory type of way because there's no, it, there wasn't issue there. But it's like, who needs that for a torn, let's say, a torn ligament? If he offered it to the patient, the patient would look at the doctor like he's crazy. The point of that is how we set up the way we perceive things is a function of our society marketing and our political economy hopefully in the future we grow uh, we grow in terms of our education in terms of our uh, social connectedness and approaching things with evidence public policy and health policy using science versus voodoo and money thank you so much sure uh, looking My forward. pleasure. It was Look. wonderful. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you in the next uh, chat for uh, methamphetamines. Thanks. Okay. okay.